It's going to be to get what Elijah's got. Oh, thank God when you get to the place where you want what Jesus has for you, you will lay off those things aside that drag you down. You'll strip down to run a race. Now when a race starts to run, a, a runner starts to run a race, he doesn't put on his big heavy overcoat. He don't put on the heaviest shoes he can find. He don't put on a big helmet. But when he starts to run the race, he strips down to the bare minimum so he won't have a whole lot to carry around. I thank God this morning, folk, if you really want to run this race for God and get what God's got for you, strip down to the bare minimum and throw off all those things uh, that lay aside that, and lay them aside that will hinder you from running the race. Now, there's a lot of folks start on this race and they go for a while. I've seen people get saved uh, and they were just full of joy and they just could go to church every night. They quit work early, whatever it was, on the farm. Somebody's holding revival over here. They would go there. Everybody's singing here, they'd go there. They put everything they had. They just couldn't get in church enough. And they just couldn't get in church enough until maybe along the way there was a little something else come up. Then they started missing church and they started not going as regular because something else had got in the way. And pretty soon they went not very much. They just missed a little. But it wasn't long until another thing came along. Folks, today we need to burn every old bridge behind us that can lead us back to sin and cross the new bridge over on the other side for Jesus Christ and therefore we can run this race. And the Bible says to run this race with patience. You've got to have patience to run this race. How about when everything's going good and you're just flying for the Lord? Everything, everybody's hollering amen and everybody's cheering you on. The music is playing and it's never easier to preach in your life. But preachers, how about that time when you show up at a place when it looks like people would rather be anywhere in the world than sitting right there listening to you preach. And yet you've got to go on and preach the word of God. You can't throw up your hands and say nobody wants to hear it anymore. There's nobody coming anymore. It's your job to stand up and sing your songs for two or three or five or six, seven or eight or 10,000. It's your job not to get your eye off of what God called you to do and why that he's given you a talent to do it. But he has given you that, that you can take it and you can run a race with patience. And then if you stick with the Lord after you've been tested and tried, there will come that day of blessing greater than the blessing you got before you got into that dull drum of working for God. Keep the patience and travel on. When you're like Job and seem like you've lost the most precious thing in your life. When it seemed like your life was blooming, life was bubbling, you were going places, you were doing everything, money was coming in, and, and everybody in the family was well, and just everything, happiness, and everything was joy, good things has happened, and you're jumping up and down. But then out of the blue, there comes that tragedy that turns it all around for the rest of your life. It will never be the same again. I thank God even through that time when you run this race for the Lord. You can't let that track you off and say, I don't think I'll go to church anymore. God doesn't love me. I must have done something wrong. Surely God wouldn't have let that happen to me. All I've done for you, Lord. I want to tell you something. It's not all I've done for God that's going to get me anywhere. It's all what God has done for me that I'm going to get somewhere. It's all because he paid a price. It doesn't mean because you have a hard time you lose a loved one or you have a heart attack or whatever it is that came along and took you from life down to near death. That's not the reason because you sinned. The reason is there's sin and death in the world and God's children are subject to be brought down in this life. But thank God, I know this morning uh, there's Donna sitting back there 
Jim back running the sound system. It wasn't long until they wondered probably if they'd ever get out of bed again. Wondered if they'd ever want anything to eat again. But thank God this morning, uh, they didn't sit down and quit. They're here in the house of God, serving the Lord, holding up his name, and giving God praise uh, that they've been redeemed, uh, and they've been touched, and they've been healed by the grace of God. Hallelujah. And then those of you that have lost people as well as ourselves, we know that it's a tragic time to go through. But thank God this morning, uh, I'm standing here full of joy. I'm standing here full of peace uh, and full of contentment because I know where they went when they left this world. And it'll only be a few days, uh, Bert, until we see Tommy and your daughter again that we gather together and some of the rest of you and my dear friends and brothers that have gone out of here. We're going to have a service like you never saw before. We're we're going to sing. We're going to walk around heaven and praise God. Won't look at the clock and say it's time to go home. Won't go to bed because it's dark because there's no darkness in that city. The gates are open by day and there shall be no night. Hallelujah. You know what that means? There shall be no night. That means there will be no more darkness, no more sin, no more corruption, no more death, no more heart attack, no more pain or no more labor and thank God we'll be free, we'll be free, we'll be free forever. All because that we're running this race with patience and running it for God. I've seen people get so loaded down a little bit, a little bit more. God blessed them. Instead of taking that blessing and sharing it with God, that wasn't enough. They wanted more until finally it totally consumed their time. It totally consumed their life. It totally consumed their joy for going to church. And so eventually, they don't sit in the seat anymore. But their mind is toward getting all this world that they can gather up. But I got news for them. You can gather it all up. You can put your arms around it. But when time comes for you to leave this world, you will leave it all behind. Heard of a man one time who was rich, and that, no un, untold riches. And somebody, when he passed away, said, wonder how much he left behind. Somebody else said he left it all. Thank God this morning, I want to leave it all behind, don't you? I want to leave it all behind because I ain't going to need anything else over on the other side. Well, real quickly, he, there, there, he called, uh, he, uh, uh, well, well, uh, we like Ronald Reagan here. Well, I'm, I, <laughs> Elijah called Elisha. And when he got to Elisha to run this race with him, he came out, he put him through a little test. He said, Elisha, he said, I, I'm going to Bethel. He said, you stay here. You know, that comes along all the time. You say, I'm going to do this, and somebody else says, you can't do that. You don't have the talent. You can't do that. You're going to preach. You're going to do this. Somebody, There's always somebody to tell you, better wait a while. But let me tell you something. If God told you to do it, do it. He'll take care of you. And so he said, Elisha, I want you to stay here. He said, no, I'm not going to stay here. He said, I'm going where you go. He said, got there. Then he went on and said, I've got to go to Jericho. And, the, and 50 men of the prophets ran out, told Elisha, they're going to take, God's going to take his head from you today. Elisha said, Elisha didn't get upset. He was calm. He said, I know it. Just leave me alone. And Elijah said, you wait here. No, 